So now what we're going to do is we're going to add some labels to these plotted points over here. And we basically want to add some little text saying the x and y coordinate of each point, just so we can read it a bit more clearly. Now remember that to render text in SVG, we would use one of these text elements and we would give it an x coordinate, a y coordinate, and inside the text tag, we would write the text that needs to be rendered. And then that would be created within the frame like this. So what we need to do is we need to create one of these text elements to go with each of these rows in the data set. And the first thing to do is to do that. So what they've already done for us is they've selected the text elements, just in case there are any already. They've bound it to this data set right here. They've called the enter method to specify what to do when there isn't a text element. And then they've said to create a new text element. So now what we need to do is we need to set these properties so that it gets drawn onto the canvas. So the first thing we're gonna do is set the X property, which is the X coordinate. And to do that, we would run the attribute method. And this time we're passing in X here. And to calculate the x-coordinate, we're going to run a function that takes in these rows right here. Now what it says is the, the x-value needs to be slightly larger than the cx-value. So what that will do is it'll push the label just to the right of this so we can see it. And it's told us here that it wants us to be 5 units more than the value for cx. So cx is just the x value from the these rows which would be the zeroth index of this array of two elements so that would be item zero and we want to move it to the right by five so if we do plus five it'll push to the right by five and we just want to return this now the next thing to do is set the y coordinate and again we'd use the attribute method and this time we're setting y now, it says that the Y coordinate can be exactly the same as the CY value. So it would be just to the right of it at the same height. So again, we can use the item function. And this time, we look at how they calculated the Y value, which is the height minus the second element or the first element in this array. So that would just be h minus and then item one because we want this index one element of each of these rows and the final thing to do is set the text of the label itself which is the part that goes inside the text tags and we can do this with the d3 text method and inside this we can give a function of what text to render for each of these rows here and it says it wants it to be in this particular format where for the first one, 34, 78, we need to do 34, comma, space, and then 78. So the first thing we need is the x coordinate, which would be the zeroth index of this row. So I'm just going to put item zero. Then we need to add the comma and the space. And then we need to add the y coordinate which is item one. Now I just need to make sure I return these and add here and return. So now it's basically created a bunch of labels with the correct X and Y coordinate and position them just next to each of the circles. And that's all we needed to do for this challenge. So I'm just gonna submit that now. And yeah, that's perfect.